back at it with another Build Biology. These guys have been here a few times. They've helped us out with a few things actually as well, like uh, our little trip to Baja. We made our Can-Am look a lot better. The Brothers Brenthal, what's up? How's it going? How are going. you guys doing? Good to see you. <laughs> All right, guys, tell me what you brought in today. This isn't something we typically can even fit in here. <laughs> it's not a Ford, it's not a Chevy. It's no, no, it's your own. What it is, it's a trophy truck. It's a proper trophy truck. And you know, the number one question we get is, is that built off like a Dodge or a Chevy or a Ford? None. There's not a single component from any street truck in there whatsoever. You know, we manufacture the frame at Brentel Industries. That's what we do is we build race trucks and every component on the chassis frame suspension is something that we manufacture in house. So it's full space frame, the whole chassis is tube. No frame rails, no nothing. It's our design. Uh, this particular vehicle we spent probably what, three, four years, four years. Uh, wow. in design yeah, development. In design. So this is our Gen 3 truck. Well, let's walk through the exterior. This is all custom made, right? All custom. The color scheme, like we were saying real quick, was we had black and red, and we went to the photographers, everyone's like, dude, that's boring. Like, everybody's car is black and red. Whatever you do, if you do like a different color, then that's what we want to see. That's fun. You want to pop, like, want all to see right. on the camera. Well, yellow wasn't either of our favorite color, but it was like the only color that wasn't on a truck out there. Mm -hmm. And now we own it. We're it looks great. On it. I, yeah. I really like it. Yeah. High letter yellow. This body is kind of special for a Gen 3 truck because our earlier models, Gen 1 and 2, those are kind of done traditionally out of fiberglass and the molds are made by hand. Mm -hmm. This one finally got up to speed with technology and it's all 3D CAD designed. So our trucks, all of our products have always been fully engineered and, and uh, designed in SolidWorks. Yeah. And finally, we got our body. So this was designed in SolidWorks. Uh, we got aero testing on it. Fitment is, is way better. Um, obviously, the molds came out way better. Yeah. And then we also have aero we got to incorporate in it as well. Um, and some cool style factors there. Yeah, the aero sure. was pretty huge. Just take a walk around it, just have yeah. a look at it. Everything's very square and then also yeah. rounded out. It's kind of nice. Yeah. Man, you can see the exhaust poking through and stuff like that. It's <laughs> yeah, really it's cool. a little bigger than Super your normal wide. exhaust. <laughs> a part of the exterior design is all this that's carrying everything in the yep. back here. So yep, yep. you got a big old fuel cell in here, right? 102 gallons, uh, usable is about 99 gallons of fuel. Yep. And this truck gets about Close. two to two and a half miles per gallon, depending on how you're driving. So not far. Yeah, not two, 250 miles, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's it's not about too bad. Yeah. yeah, it's about the same amount of your tires get. Your rear tires get about the same. Oh, really? Yeah. So yeah. that's something I didn't know, yeah. how much yeah, you get out of that. Exactly, in Baja, when you're racing, you know, uh, along like a Baja 1000, right? We set up our pits anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. It's wherever we can access the course and however far the truck will go. Such a wild looking setup. Yeah, it's I've a pressure, before, but it's pressure so cool. fueling system. Yeah, it's 30, awesome. yeah, under 30 seconds. Under 100, 30 gallons. 100 gallons. Yeah. Under 30 seconds. <laughs> you down. have everything you need back here, huh? Well, close to everything. Every, everything. As much as you can. Yeah, the stuff that you can change quickly and easily on course. You know, you're not going to bring a transmission because obviously it weigh down the truck too much yeah. and it'd just be ridiculous. How much does the truck you know? weigh? This one's about 5850. Competitors out there that are over 7000, I think if you get too much below 5800, then the trucks don't work that well. And the <laughs> biggest things we've done, you know, with um, corner weights and everything is really from our generations, we first started with the rear fuel cell mm -hmm. and rear tires. Yeah. And those work really well on the bumps. We wanted to get a little more steering with our Gen 2. So we moved the uh, fuel cell to a mid fuel cell. So mm -hmm. in a, one of our generations, the fuel cell is up here. That truck did some things excellent, right? It turned really well. And then when we got to our Gen 3, we found that we were kind of one extreme and then one extreme on our first two. Yeah. So this is a combination of both of those, placing it exactly where we wanted it, really based off having tens of thousands of miles of us racing them. But as far as the overall geometry and movement of the truck, it's unreal. Yeah. And we'll save the suspension for a little bit because I want to see if we can pull on one of these sides off so we can see. Yeah, yeah, yep, sure. definitely. But let's get to the interior if we can. Cool, one of course, of yeah. It doesn't matter. Some electronics in there. Look at all this, man. All carbon. Yep. It's just Yeah, there's a little, uh, that's kind of a neat little feature we got on there. Oh, wow. Zeus is up, that way you can get to Access your to some tank, power, power steering. steering yeah. oil. Wow, that's cool. Quick access during a race. So we have a few things going on. These big guys are Lowrance. These are GPS systems. So one GPS screen, two GPS screen. So you got the driver and he has one. Really, it's, it's kind of a, either a backup or a reference. The navigator's job sitting over here, he's got the big one because he has a GPS trail 
on the GPS, and he's calling out turns, dangers that you've marked earlier in pre-running. He's watching the temp gauges. So this guy is reading the data on here, telling you where to go, how extreme rights and lefts are. I think it's cool that you have all this stuff over here too, as far as engine temp, oil temp, and all that oh, yeah. as well, so you can keep an eye on it, keep oh. the driver going. Exactly, yeah. lifesaver. Yeah. Um, yeah. We yeah, have brake biases, yep. uh, pedal wow. pressures. Yeah, that's cool. Pedal yeah. pressure for everything. Man, that really makes it a team sport there. Yep. yep. So as far as the driver goes, mm -hmm. you got a handbrake right there? Yeah. Yeah, so that's only more... for rear tires. It locks up the rear tires to help it slide around. Cool. Other things in here, um, aside from all of our data, right, that gives us kind of everything we need. If mm -hmm. something bad is happening, it's going to scream at us. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're, you know, whatever, your temp's hot, oil pressure, whatever it is. So that is a huge help. And of course, data after the race. You get back and hey, plug in the life system and you know what, figure out what was or wasn't happening. What ECU is? Uh, it's all life. Yeah, that's, sun visors. You know, that's what I, mean, I was just gonna get yeah. to. Every like, car is equipped with sun visors, visors, right? Yeah, I, mean, I like it. It looks so robust. And then uh, communication. That's huge in, yeah. in racing Baja. Uh, we have a radio right there. Uh, pretty simple. It's a two-way radio, VHF, and we have our own channels. So we're talking to our chase trucks, our support crew, our helicopters if we have one for that particular race and that's just getting data. Yep, one other thing in here which people are gonna ask about, I know if we don't talk about it, what's that hose dangling around? This is a Parker pumper, it's a hose, and there's a filter on the bottom, and it pumps fresh air into your helmet. Yeah, so you can um, breathe. Yeah, it's not oxygen, <laughs> it's not like, there's no tank, it's just a filter, so the dust goes through this filter, and there's a pump on it, and it comes here into your helmet, mm -hmm. just to give you fresh air. Well, let's talk about the power play, let's yeah. move to it. Can we pop this baby Let's do off? it, yep, absolutely. <laughs> So what we've got is a Danzio P600. It's a big block. It has 1,100 horsepower. It's a little unique because in the past, everyone's always used small blocks, mm -hmm. only because big blocks are difficult to package and they do weigh 85 pounds more. And then I see hardline coolant lines running back. Yep, all hardline, all the all way aluminum. front to rear, 280 amp alternator to make sure to all the electrical systems. Power everything. Power yeah. everything while yeah, running. Yep, so all the electronics, lights and everything. Yep. What water pump is in here? Is it electric or do you run a mechanical? No, it's a mechanical. Mechanical? Yeah. yeah. And yeah, everything runs to the back in that massive radiator. That. Oil cooler yeah. up front. Yeah. the engine oil cool. So this is a huge oil cooler as yeah, well. Yeah, it is. Yep. And then you can see in the hood, we have a duct in the front there. Right. That just lets air get to the cooler, so it's obviously not stuck underneath it. I just love even all these finish panels are really cool. Yeah. And really nice wiring. Yep, and wiring inspection. Yep, all mill spec, ray cam. And even keeping the shot reservoirs up here, keep everything cool. Yep, all fin reservoirs. There's a lot to think about, but below the body line, so that if somebody does roll, that yeah. it's not wrecked and they can keep continuing the race. Yeah. Yeah. Might as well dive into the suspension. I mean, we're right here. The lower arms, upper arms, everything is 4130 uh, chromoly, TIG welded yep. plate. And it starts out as hundreds of pieces of flat plate, obviously. It's, right. That's one of the pieces that's kind of unique. All these tubes obviously started out as 20 foot sticks of tubing. Mm -hmm. And this started out as like four by eight sheets four of metal. Sheets yeah, steel, yeah, you know, yeah. And all cut out, welded Lazy together. Cut, bent. Everything's heat treated, gets it about 30% more strength. Our uprights, <laughs> which are a huge, obviously, part of the suspension. Um, these are sheet metal. We actually have a current design and process right now for billet. So it's a huge chunk of aluminum and it all gets milled out. So that can be one billet. Part. Yeah. So we got bump stops here, shocks wise. We got Kings, 3.5 coilovers, IVP internal bypass. So that's a spring, obviously, that holds the weight of the truck. There's valving in there. And then also we have our position sensitive bypass shock, which is probably unique to most guys on the road, right? But sure. it's a secondary shock. It's a four and a half inches diameter. So four and a half inch King shock. Yep. And it's position sensitive. So if you see these tubes right here, mm -hmm. they'll have screws and adjusters on them it's for compression and rebound. Right. What those do is they let the wheels go up and down at different speeds, depending on what kind of holes you're going to hit. So that's just a secondary um, hydraulic bump stop. They contact the arm at the last bit of travel. Mm -hmm. They all bottom out together. It just this very last helps the suspension compress yep. the big hits. Now, how much travel is there front and rear? So we have 26 inches of travel in the front and we have 32 inches of travel in the rear. <laughs> Steering's a big part of the suspension that we integrated into this truck, into the Gen 3. You can see all these Bitch and billet plates with Zerk fittings that make it greasable from the outside. Yeah. Usually you use a steering rack is what we've used in the past. And it's much easier to build a steering rack, but no matter what you do when you're doing geometry and trying to get bump steer out, you cannot eliminate bump steer in a turn with a steering rack that goes straight. So you need something that 
moves in an arc like your steering is able to to get bump steer out. To get the bump steer out, yeah. that allows you to feel better in the truck. You get less feedback in the wheel. And that's our what we call swing set steering. Yeah. So if you watch it, it, it swings up and down instead of going back and forth only. That's really cool. That's a big piece. Yep. Yeah. And another <laughs> big thing from the driver's perspective is what eliminating the bump steer does, like John was talking about, is it eliminates feedback in the wheel and ultimately it makes an easier truck for the guy to drive, right? Yeah. You go through bumps and your wheel is now just wherever your hands put it instead of jarring back and forth and yeah. breaking your thumbs or whatever. Well, you can see right here, as, as we said, like all the suspension arms are relatively flat, which yeah. means that's almost dead on, right? Yep. So yep. Yep. These are the biggest air rods I think I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> They're so beefy, and we need to take notes on that on the drifting side. Well, um, let's get another look at it on the lift. All right, we said the lift. We can't get it on the lift. So first thing, we've got these aluminum bedside mounts and they're made to be a breakaway point because in off-road racing, you beat stuff up. And then we threw our logo in there. Always like to throw that around. It is an old school blacksmith. Moving on, we got massive brakes here, right? Alcon brakes are pretty cool because they're the only brakes that are actually designed for a trophy truck. Other brands out there, use kind of something they had from a road car or other program, and yeah. these were 100% designed, and they absolutely are the best. We've tried every kind of brakes out there, they and look they gnarly. are hands down. <laughs> it's a significant performance gain. It's, it's insane. I mean, the truck stops. It stops like a road car. You got a lot of weight, big tires, we're in dirt. It stops. And then everything you have here is carbon fiber panels. All fitting. carbon. Yep, yep, yep. Nicely fitted in there. They're actually the same from one truck to another. So for any reason you need to replace the panels, you can call us up, say, hey, I need this part number, this panel, wow. and throw it in. That's a big That's, part of our program. Yeah. In the desert, we change our own tires. Right? Yeah. You're in the middle of the desert, you got to hop out, navigator gets out, change the tire with the impact, and sometimes they fall on the ground, sometimes you lose one. Yep. Pull a pin right off here and you got a spare. That's so. awesome. That's a really good idea. Yeah, mm. and if it's a really bad day and you have so many flats that your battery dies, <laughs> Don't oh, worry, yeah. it's already a long day, so you're gonna pull out the breaker bar. So that's a spare, we put that on every truck. And then all the two work and everything that had to go I like the this, bump stop say. mounts a lot. They're kind of unique where yeah. they drop in from the top. It's a nice sheet metal part. We always try and lighten the parts, keep them strong with triangles. Triangles, the strongest shape you can make. Yep. So Again, that's all 4130 plate, the whole chassis. It's beautiful welds in there as well. So underneath here, what gearbox do you run on this transmission? We run a Colhane Turbo 400. So it's from an old school Chevy uh, Turbo 400 from, I don't know, the 50s, something like that. <laughs> and uh, nowadays, the entire internals are rebuilt. They're all billet and stuff like just that. Just the case of a Turbo 400. Yeah, right. just it's the overall idea, but yeah. high performance. Still obviously. using them. Yep, yep. That's right. crazy. Yep, with an underdrive as well. Right. Yeah, it's got an underdrive, but that does slows down the drive shaft. So you can put a more engagement of tooth in your rear end because what they used to come with when you get a 529, you're only gonna get one tooth of engagement. What yeah. you really need to see is like a 410, 411. With this much power. With this much right. power. Yeah, you need at least two teeth of engagement so they can rear gear will last longer. So speaking of the rear end, what are we running here? That is our housing uh, that we manufacture. Internal has 36 spline trophy truck axles, so they're about <laughs> they're two huge. and an eighth around. Really? They're about that big, I they're intense. I kind of wondered that for yeah. a while too. Then on the rear, rear end after that, these little guys right here, again, if you're not an off-road, you don't know what the Limit hell strap. these are. These are glimmer straps. You can see right now they're loose because we're basically at ride height. But when the rear end droops out at our 32 inches of wheel travel, they catch it. That's where we limit the travel. So How about that, that arm right there? We're pretty excited about that, that thing, piece. That's, we're really you excited can't about miss that, that, that one. Thing's 60 huge. inches of solid billet aluminum. Solid aluminum. Yep. Milled wow, out. This is too much. That holds the entire truck up. That's amazing. And we're using King's new clevises too, King Shocks. This is kind of a different style, a little unique. They're trick, they're rad. It works well with our new billet arm. So we're really happy with it. And again, bump stops just like the front. These ones have a four inch stroke. It's more travel back here. So we have uh, more damping as you come up. So longer stroke in the bump stop. You can set the pressure in that to adjust, um, you know, if you want it stiffer or, uh, or lighter. Mm -hmm. And that goes onto a specially built 
bump pad because it sees a lot of force and you can oh, see the wear mark there. Man, that's a big old piece yep. there. And then looking up back through here, it's so much cage work and cool stuff. That's yeah. transmission, transmission cooler. Transmission coolers. Yep. Both yeah. of them? Yeah, yep. correct. Cool. So they're mounted there and in the cab, they're actually just, they're between the seats so they get air to pull fresh air as it's coming into the yeah, front side. Yeah, and that's where we saw the paneling before yep. there was just kind with of- the, With the stainless steel mesh steel, in it. Steel, yeah. yeah. And then that up there is the radiator, the top. The yep, big yep. one? Yep. Yeah, yep. the big, biggest one there yeah, is the radiator. You can see the lines, the hard lines running down through there. It's yeah. really cool. It so is that a steel drive shaft? Yeah, it is. Especially made drive shaft. I'd say most of people run steel for this purpose, yeah. right? Because yeah, al aluminum stuff like that would be a little bit Yeah, it would go out too, too weak. quickly. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, it, you can see that's again 4130, about 3 16 thick. That's there to protect the third member back there. And a big sway bar up Massive there. Massive sway bar. That's, yeah. that's exactly that's, what I yeah. was going to get to. Even the mounts to it, I was, I was looking at it. Yep, with big links. And with 32 inches of wheel travel back here and 26 in the front, you can imagine how much a truck would lean without that. You want to tell the people how to check this stuff out, where, where they can get these trucks and look at everything? Of course, you can check it out a lot of places. Uh, one on our website, brenthel.com, brenthelindustries.com, spelled like that E L. Brenthel. We Brenthel. got it. We got it now. Awesome. Jonathan Easy. Brenthel. And Jordan Brenthel. You guys are awesome. This truck is sick. We've seen it in action. We'll see it in action again. Right. I love the livery. I love the work. You guys do great work. So thank thanks you. Thanks for Appreciate coming by, it. guys. You bet. Appreciate it. Later. Hydraulic jacks, if you've got more spare parts. Oh, come on.